Americans, your government is about to give you a giant enema. It's not going to be pretty. What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line for Sunday, August the 16th. And of course, tomorrow is tax day, uh, as it could have been yesterday, uh, but it is uh, tomorrow is uh, taxes. And of course, I, I think the, uh, the world is about to change big time as we continue to see uh, governments around the world trying to stick it to their citizens and as I like to say, give them a giant enema to clean them out. Uh, you know, we continue to see uh, the uh, jobsless claims increase. We continue to see the lack of employment. We are on our on the road to stagflation, which is by far the worst of all that we could possibly see. Uh, we have got a president who has no idea what's going on around him and who continues to do things that are about as dumb as you can possibly see. But yet here we are in a position watching everything that's going to hurt us in, and not help us at le in one bit. Okay, you've got consumer credit. There is none. Okay, banks are going to be in trouble once again. You know, this is, this is the the advantage you have when you are big time, okay, and you're considered too big to fail, you have the Federal Reserve and the government to bail you out because, of course, they have access to your wallet through taxes. We are in that position of taxation without representation, and I know that 200 and some years ago, we went to war for this in 1776, uh, but as you look around, and you see some of the things that are going on. And what have we noticed over the last few years? Big corporations are taking over the country. They're taking over the world. And of course, if you strap the American consumer from buying houses, from buying cars, from doing whatever it is that they can do because they are now so strung out on credit like they would be on heroin, and they can they no longer can get it. You've got you've got BlackRock there with Larry Fink to pick up the pieces. And of course, Fink is talking about that the Fed has to continue to hike rates to tame the man-made inflation. Remember, last week we talked about there are two types of inflation. Okay. There is good inflation, which is built on demand in a prospering economy. And there is bad inflation, which is really taxation without representation, which is what we are witnessing now. But if you're somebody like Larry Fink and like BlackRock sitting with billions and trillions of dollars, well, when, when the world can't buy anything, you have the capital to buy it up. You don't have to go borrow it. You can use your funds to go ahead and s suck up everything so that when, when we do get back into a solid economy at some point, all the assets that you would buy are gone. And they're now being controlled by those who do not have your best interest at heart. Okay. They're not buying up to be helpful to you. They're buying up, first of all, to make money, which I have no problem with making money. But they are, they are putting this country in a position to destroy you as they suck up all your assets. Okay. And of course, that becomes a, a major problem with 70% with, with of Americans under severe financial pressure, stressed out, okay, 58% are living paycheck to paycheck. Okay, now that is, the paycheck to paycheck has been very common here for many, many years because of course, when we look at things, it's about, well, can I afford to pay it by the month? As long as my paycheck will cover it. We don't think about putting money away. We don't think about saving. We think about what can I, how can I keep up with the Joneses? Okay. And, and of course, this is, becomes a, a, another problem. And, you know, you, you have, there's now obviously a lot of talk. I've heard many questions about it. And now Brazil's president comes out and challenges 
The U.S. dollar is the reserve currency. You know, we are certainly being weakened as a nation. Uh, President Biden and, and the America haters are, are certainly weakening who we are. We, are. we have given up the ship to everybody. And you are seeing some of the action in Taiwan from China, which is almost provoking a war with the United States. And again, you can say that the United States is the greatest country in the world. And you won't get an argument from me, but what you will get from me is that we are not increasing at the rate we should be being better than everybody else. We are actually going backwards, trying to, to catch the back of the rest of the world by, by, by bringing our standards and bringing ourselves down, destroying a small business at every opportunity. And for some reason, it was always my uh, learning that said that the Democratic Party was always the party of the small. Well, we can see well, how great they are as a party of the small as they destroyed business after business, small business owner after small business owner, through COVID, through all of this. And, and now, of course, you have many major chains closing down their stores in inner cities because, of course, we no longer are the country of law and order. We are now the country of steal away. Don't worry about it. You can steal because what that really does is it, 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 it forces companies to lay off employees because they can't afford the theft. You're going to see Walmart closed. They've already announced that they're closing all of their city stores in Chicago. Walgreens is closing many of their city stores. So those people that live in those neighborhoods that are good citizens are not going to have the access that they had. Why? Because we continue to allow the criminals to run the country, whether it is the white collar criminals of government that have fucked you, okay, or it's the, the the dangerous criminals on the street. But you have destroyed law and order in this country, okay, leaving everything to chance. And if you ever need the assistance of a police officer or somebody, you may not get it. In California, they're closing uh, some beauty supply chains because of all the theft. You know, big companies can absorb the theft. They'll just cut down on the number of employees they work. So again, that goes back into, into jobs, okay? Now, as you look and you see, retail sales continue to fall, okay? And of course, we keep hearing how good we're doing, and certainly the stock market, which we'll get into our business report, thinks that everything's okay. But you have to wonder, okay, and, and say to yourself, is everything truly, really okay? And I would say to you that when you start to see some of these bankruptcies that are going to come, come out, you're going to see bankruptcies like you've never seen before. And, and I think that that really puts you into a, a, an understanding that when companies you never thought could go bankrupt are going to go bankrupt, you're going to see probably some of the biggest devastation ever. And what does that mean for the overall economy? Well, it can't be good. Okay. Bankruptcies can't be good. And as you look at, at what's happening, and, and part of the reason for bankruptcy is, is certainly online shopping, okay, that has taken a lot out. Uh, but the high cost of goods and services, the high cost of, of help, and of course, the money that you make does not overcome the cost of living. And, and of course, the elderly who are on Social Security are going to see that probably in spades next year as the the cost of living increase is going to be is is stated to be much less than in the past, and inflation is not going away. And I think this is one of the things that we keep forgetting to understand is is that if you're making two dollars a week and you're spending three dollars a week, it's only so long before you go broke. And and I think that you know when you when you see this and watch how this is going. Look at the number of layoffs from Best Buy, who just announced a new round of layoffs, to Amazon, to Meta. To, there is not many who haven't laid off. Now you talk about the store closings 
And, and these are unfortunately all self-induced problems, okay? Because you have an administration that is full of hatred and does not want Americans to be free. They want us to be part of a socialist, Marxist, or communist regime. Okay, now, now why, would you want, why would you want to take what was once the most powerful and greatest country in the world and turn it into a piece of shit, which is exactly what they're headed on and doing. As you watch the crime rise everywhere, you watch these moronic progressives get elected in, in big cities that are already in trouble, the taxes continue to go higher, and, and yet here we are, and nobody cares. And this is something that we, we, we worry about all the time. And of course, now with all of the, I don't know, transgender and all the, the, the court cases about this, and, and of course, we'll get to this in our commentary, but uh, this, this, is, this bud is not for you. But we will talk about that later. But again, be prepared for a gigantic enema. Because that's what this government, this this administration wants to give you. They want to stick it up as far as they can and drain you of everything you got. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, April the 16th. We're going to stop out here for a break and we'll be right back with more of Bubba's Bottom Line. What's up, kids? As you know, there are sponsors. And of course, my sponsors are really not sponsors here. They're really people that I have seeked out that I think can do the best job for those of you who like to trade, invest, or whatever. And of, of course, you know, as we have our brokerage partners, I do have many brokers. I will always make that clear for you. Uh, but I do prefer for commodities and futures, it is the Capital Trading Group. Okay. And why are they so good? Well, listen, they got great customer service. And of course, if you call a broker, you're not calling to say how you're doing, you're calling, you need help. Okay. Uh, they, they do the great job. They're partners with us in our letter of direction trading and in, our, in Day Trader's Dream and a couple of other things. But check them out, info.capitaltradinggroup.com forward slash Bubba. It's scrolling on the side for you if, you if I speak too fast, okay? But again, check them out. It, it, you don't have to sign up with them, I, I, but I urge you for your own benefit to check them out along with for, op, uh, for options and equities, which, which is trade your brokerage. At ten dollars a month, I don't know how anybody could beat it. I mean, it's, it saves me personally a hundred thousand dollars a year in commission. And and why, so why would I want to pay more to get the same? I mean, you know, all trades go to the same place. They all go to the same clearing firm. The question is, what do you pay for? Them? Okay, but Trader has the ability to auto execute our portfolios. We have the software. If you're a a member of our portfolio management, you get it for free. Okay, it's still the ten dollars a month. If you are a hedger, it costs you the $10 a month, and then we have a licensing fee for our software, but it does everything automa automatic for you. It's automated. So why wouldn't you want to check it out? It's in its try.trader.com forward slash Bubba. And again, that's also scrolling on the side. And of course, our last attempt to resurrect our high school program to help educate and financially literize our, our, young, our youth uh, which is very hard because of the unions and things in these days, and the teachers don't want it. The teachers don't give a shit, especially those that are tenured in these unions. But it's high school investing that we want to, want to help with. And you can go to patreon.com forward slash Bubba Trading. And again, it's, it's, it's scrolling along the bottom. Look, we're trying to help make better generate make generate future generations and and put them in better shape. In the meantime, this is Bubba's bottom line. Todd Bubba Horowitz. Let's get back for our market report right now. And welcome back. It is Bubba's Bottom Line for Sunday, April the 16th. And, of course, markets had eh, an interesting week. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. With all the data we had, inflation, there's some BS inflation number. But again, remember, they don't count food and energy, which is always a problem since, for the most part, food and energy is your number one expense, barring an emergency. Uh, producer price indexes were uh, producer prices are higher, uh, not good. Okay, Michigan sentiment not good. Retail sales not good, and of course the markets tried to rally. And in fact, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, Thursday especially had a monster rally, and then Friday you had a big sell off, but still had a big recovery late in the day. 
but we have big troubles with inflation. We know that high rates are going higher. You know, I, I think that the bond and note market finally figured it out. But as we look back, we see that the equities were all slightly higher. You know, not dramatically, but slightly. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, again, I, to me, this is a, a warning sign. You're getting a lot of warning signs out there. Now, we are long, as you know, we're, we're long the Dow, we're long the S&P, we're long the NASDAQ, we're short to Russell. Now, I, I listen, I, I do think that I will say here that I do believe the top is in. Uh, I do believe that there is a massive sell-off in the works somewhere down the road. Uh, I can't tell you when, obviously, unless I'm long. So I don't think it's coming tomorrow. But of course, our system, our models will change when the time is right. Uh, but I, I think that you have to continue to remember that you cannot keep ignoring all the problems and figuring that they're just going to go away. They don't. Okay. Uh, as we look at the things that we do look at every week, of course, that's, of course, the dollar index, which was lower for the week once again. Uh, and it is approaching that 101 on its way to maybe a buck even. We don't trade it anymore for many reasons, but if we were trading it, we would still be short. Okay. Uh, the euro currency, which we do trade, we are long and have been long. And again, I still believe it's going to 88 cents. But again, I'm not going to fight the taper fart the market. I'm going to go participate with it. But in my mind, it is going to 88 cents. Okay. Bitcoin uh, is back over 30,000 probably headed to 35,000 now. And of course, you can see that there's a lot of interest in crypto again. Why? Well, because the digital currency, the weakness in governments and banking, the manipulation that goes on, the fraudulent fiat currency system, for many reasons. Uh, bonds and notes had, you know, a down week. Okay. And, you know, again, that, that indicates interest rates are going higher. I think it, I think the 10-year notes are going to 6%. I think mortgages will be over 10%. Okay, that's my opinion. Again, that, there's no fact behind it. Just my opinion of what I'm watching. Uh, but we are still long both bonds and notes uh, in the uh, in the metals, uh, gold, silver, and platinum. We, we're long gold and silver. We would be long platinum if we were trading it, but we don't because it's not liquid enough. But in the meantime, the bottom line is that I think gold's making a new high at some point. I think silver's going into the mid-30s. Now, we can have some pullback. We had a big sell-off on Friday. But overall, you're still higher and you're still running higher. Okay. Um, in the uh, copper market, we're still long and copper has you know, been up. And I don't understand it. I mean, it makes no sense to me. But again, I don't ask why. I just say, which direction am I supposed to be? Uh, in the natural gas, natural gas was a little bit higher last week. Had a big charge on Friday. Uh, in fact, it's funny, we're, we're trading in the morning and we said, you know, maybe it's time to take a shot. And I said, well, if you already bought some, here's a good place to add. And, and then it exploded to the upside for the day. But my point is that you watch and there are certain levels that, are, that make sense in the commodity space only. And of course, crude oil exploded higher uh, last Sunday night on uh, OPEX, um, on OPEX um, the cut, which was not a surprise. In fact, We've talked about here uh, many times of the the, uh, uh, the, the, the the that they were going to create a shortage, and I think they're going to have one more cut, okay, and really stick it up our ass. Uh, in the meantime, in the grain markets, grains were a little stronger last week, with the exception of wheat. We had a big day on Friday, but wheat was pretty flat for the week. Beans were slightly higher. Corn had a nice week, uh, but I do think that the lows are in in the grains. Uh, we are long all of them, uh, and I do think that we're going to start to see a bigger charge here. I think at some point, you know, the from the wholesale to the retail prices, there's, there's a lot of money missing somewhere. Uh, and of course, in the in the protein complex, uh, the uh, cattle live cattle made an all-time high this week. Uh, feeder cattle is working its way higher, and hogs have been getting hammered. And we we don't trade them anymore, but we would be long cattle and short hogs. However. I would think that cattle is probably reaching somewhere of a peak. Uh, you're getting to a point, you know, all-time highs uh, into a market. But again, there is a big shortage. But I would think that you're going to see some little bit of a pullback here. And as we've said for the last couple of weeks, if any dip in hogs is worth a shot as a buy, because the going out the curve, they look pretty good. Uh, in the uh, in the softs, 
Cocoa was higher, we're long. Cotton is lower, we're short. OJ is higher, we're long. Sugar is higher, we're long. And coffee is higher, we're long. So again, you can see that our positions are certainly in, in pretty good shape. We had a pretty good week this week. And if the, the other thing that, I, that, that concerns me and that I would be thinking about is, is, is the VIX, which continues to get hammered, which indicates lots of complacency and lots of trouble a brewing. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Todd Bubba Horwitz. As we step out here for our final break and come back with our commentary, just remember, when you're trading, if you're trading actively, sometimes it's better not to trade. Sometimes it's just better to watch, or as we like to say here, observe. We'll be right back with more of Bubba's Bottom Line. Well, kids, as always, we're talking about our sponsors and, of course, our brokers. And I have other brokers, but these are the ones I prefer. And, of course, it's Capital Trading Group for Commodities and Futures. And I do recommend to all of you, if you trade both commodities, futures, stocks, and options, I would have a, I would have a futures broker for futures and a stock and options broker for equities because you do not get the same service if you use one for both. I have yet to find one that can handle both both functionally and cost-wise. But in the meantime, Capital Trading Group, which is scrolling on the sides along with Trade Your Brokerage for equities and options, and of course our high school program. Uh, we'd love to get it to back up and running and we're working our butts off trying to do so. But in the meantime, it's hard when you can't get any cooperation. In the meantime, let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line on this Sunday, April the 16th, and have our commentary and no sports to, of note other than the NBA playoffs, but too early to start going there for series. In the meantime, we'll get right back to Bubba's Bottom Line right now. Welcome back. It is Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, April the 16th, and of course, every week I give you a little bit of commentary of what I'm thinking, and of course, you know that I'm how distraught and how upset I am about the government that is running this country right now. Uh, because they're haters, not because they're Democrats. I'm listen, I'm a libertarian. I'm down the middle, and but they, this this particular administration is about as much of hatred of America as anything I've ever seen in my 65 years. But in the meantime, we now have this ridiculous transgender campaign, and it's almost like we're trying to pitch transgender and and have people switch. Now, look. In your own private life, do whatever you want. I don't care. But I don't need to have to be broadcast. I don't want to see Bud Light cans with transgender on their cans. And, of course, they're getting, Budweiser and Aaron Bush is getting hammered for it. They're, they've lost many of their spon- people that, that, that were putting them as sponsors, okay? Many of NASCAR, many country music. And they're starting to lose more venues. And, I, and they've lost me as a customer, for example. Okay, Because I don't need to be pushed in my face what, something that I, I don't necessarily agree with. I certainly don't. I, if, you, if that's how you feel and you want to be transgender, hey, great. But you should be an adult. I don't think we should be teaching our 12-year-old ch- children okay, about maybe switching over. I, I think that you know, there, there's, there's, there's evidence that some of this is almost coerced. And, and I, I think that, you know, we have to allow for it because it's something part of it. But to be, make it part of national advertising campaigns, to me, no good. And they, no company that, does, that uses that as a campaign will have my money or nor will I buy for them. Because to me, I think that it should be you know, something that is between those people and we should not be trying to create a new type of person. In the meantime, this is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz. We're going to see you on well, tomorrow with Bubba's Day Update. And of course, have a great weekend, everybody. We will see you back here. And as always, be safe, be careful, disciplined, and patient, and don't fight the tape. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow with Bubba's Day Update.